This is a continuation from our previous committee hearing on uh, nitrates. And so uh, apologies, Representative Jacob, thank you for your patience on this. Uh, and with that, uh, if we will put the bill before us uh, for House File 4044 for consideration. Um, and we also have an amendment. Uh, so, but Representative Jacob, would you like to uh, to explain your bill first and then we can move to amendments. Uh, sure, so first of all, thank you for the opportunity to uh, present my Ag Water Quality Certification Bill today. I wanna to start by thanking uh, all the people who signed on to the bill. It really did feel good to have bipartisan support on the bill. Also wanna thank uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Tom Peterson, Ag Department and Brad Redland for all your work on the Ag Water Quality Certification problem program in the past. Um, so the bill I bring forward today, it's a solution-oriented bill, genuine forthright attempt to solve the issues brought forward by, uh, in a petition to the EPA concerning groundwater issues in Southeast Minnesota, and most of those issues actually within my, dist my district, the eight county area in Southeast Minnesota. What the bill seeks to do is to tie a $5 per acre tax credit to any acres that farmers get ag water quality certified. And so with that, when a farm becomes ag water quality certified, uh, some of the practices that would be involved with that ag water quality certification would be erosion control structures, uh, contour farming, cover crops, no-till practices, precision agriculture, uh, and nutrient and manure management. So the immediate goal of the bill would be to address the nitrate issues within Southeast Minnesota, uh, but additional benefits of the bill would include, the bill protects against any potential runoff related issues associated with agricultural practices such as uh, some of the issues would be fish kills or any other pesticide or chemicals that, that could be associated with agricultural practices or agricultural runoff. Um, I'll say that every farm group that I've talked to supports the bill. Uh, that include Farmers Union, Farm Bureau, Minnesota Corn Growers Association, Minnesota Soybean Growers Association, and actually the media outlets in Southeast Minnesota have been uh, very enth enthusiastic about seeing a solution to the nitrate issue coming out of this legislature. So, and also I'd say that the, the bill does not pit neighbor against neighbor, farmer against farmer, doesn't pit small ag against large ag. It treats everyone equally, whether you have one acre, 100, or more acres, it, it, it treats each acre, not the um, person associated with the acre. So <clears throat> I look forward to answering any questions and, and good discussion. We heard some uh, testimony here the other day, so. Um, and. Uh, uh, Representative Purcell has an amendment, I understand, as well. That's correct. So we'll move to an amendment. Uh, there is an A1 amendment uh, to uh, Representative Purcell. Please move and discuss your amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move the A1 amendment before the committee. Uh, the A1 amendment is to expand the geographic region of uh, the, the listing on the original bill just had the um, counties that the EPA letter included, but we know that the karst, topography, the karst geology extends um, into parts of both Dakota and Rice counties, and so this is um, a list of townships of which uh, could also be included in this program. And then the second part of the uh, amendment is to uh, require kind of the standard annual report language back to the legislature. Uh, discussion to the amendment, Representative Jacob. Yeah, I can I can accept the amendment. The the language as it was written uh, came specifically from those counties that were in the target area of the petition. Um, I think the the program would be a good program to have statewide, uh, in the interest of keeping the price tag low, kind of in a in a a pilot program situation. That's where I came up with the parameters that I did, uh, expanding it to the the townships that uh, Representative Purcell wants to include that, that would be uh, fine with me. And of course, any 
any reporting and accountability, I don't have any issues with any of that, so uh, I would certainly accept the amendments. Okay. Further discussion, Representative Anderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Purcell, any idea how many acres um, would be included in those, I believe, 12 townships you have mentioned here? Representative Purcell. Uh, thank you, Representative Anderson. I have that same question, and uh, we are trying to figure that out exactly, and um, you know, looking at sort of the fiscal impact of the original eight counties versus adding these, and looking at how many acres of certified farms there are. I don't know that answer. I don't know if House Research does. I know this is a discussion that um, I had with Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan. Madam Chair and, and Representative Purcell, I don't know the number of certified acres in the townships that are listed in the A1. Um, I don't know if the Department of Agriculture has that um, level of detail for the location of certified acres, but that they may be able to um, at least estimate the number for the committee. Representative Anderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, it was just a point of, of, of question in that um, I, I fully support the program, but again, we're dealing with some budget constraints this this session and um, I'd have no problem with these townships being added but again it's going to add to the cost somewhat but uh, we'll have to see where it goes further discussion representative Cha yes uh, representative Jacob um, we were in a legacy committee and I think you kind of um, had an opportunity to talk about participating in the ag water quality uh, certification program um, I, I think it would be uh, good for this community uh, if you uh, were able to share your experience as being one of the uh, certified farms on this program. Representative Jacobs. Sure. Well, thank you, <clears throat> Representative John Chervang. Yeah, so uh, about a dozen years ago, I saw Mr. Uh, Brad Redlin show up at one of my water resource committees. I sat on the Whitewater Joint Powers Board at that time. He introduced this uh, potential program, Ag Water Quality Certification, and in my general distrust of government, I, I grilled him pretty hard on things. I said, we don't want any more government. And as he uh, explained the program, brought it forward, I could see the, the benefits and actually, um, m one of my frustrations has been that we have so many groups working on so many different programs that um, we're losing focus and that streamlining things would be more important. But I could see the, the value of this program where the, the, the rubber really hits the road, where, uh, you know, uh, pieces of, of, uh, of uh, methods that we can, can actually protect the environment and, and do good going forward was very easy for me to see. So we went forward with that pilot program. My farm became the sixth farm in the state to become ag water quality certified there more than 10 years ago and I recently got a letter from Tom Peterson letting me know that the certification is a 10 year program and my farm is already up for recertification. Um, for myself it was very easy and I, I think that's what we'd find with many of the other farmers in the area or in the state for that matter is that I was already implementing all the practices uh, to protect groundwater and to protect the environment. So I didn't really have to change much, although since that time I did uh, go into uh, no-till farming about six years ago. So uh, it was easy, seamless, and I think farmers would be surprised that uh, they're, gonna, they're gonna find out that they're already implementing many of the uh, parts of the program that need to be implemented, and if, if they're not, then the program would bring that forward shed light on it and get those get those particular pieces that they don't have implemented, get those implemented and and uh, protect not just the groundwater but any runoff that could come come off of a farm. So uh, it, the program just really really speaks to what can we do now now what, what uh, with the program we're going to implement pretty much every strategy, every best management practice that there is available to resolve the issues that we have before us. So, and, and many more than just the nitrate issues. Representative Chow. Thanks for sharing your uh, value experience, mm -hmm. Representative Jacob. Oh. Further discussion, Representative Burko. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was going to ask if Mr. Redlin or, or Commissioner Peters could come down and give us an explanation, a little background on egg water quality, but um, mm -hmm. you did it. 
So I don't know if that's necessary at this point, but I, my question probably is more for the chair. If, if you explain to me, I, I, we're laying this bill over, I understand, is that, is that the intent? Is there, is there no reason we wouldn't get this to taxes since it really is, that, that's where it really should end up, correct? Yeah, Representative Burkle, um, as uh, you know, Representative Anderson said earlier, we're, this year is not quite a budget year, and considering um, we don't know exactly how much money this costs, especially with this amendment, uh, I think it still needs a little bit more work, so therefore we will lay it over. Representative Burkle? Well, that's understandable. I, I just, I would refer back to your bill. We just heard it angry, and, and uh, it seems to be the case that some bills move and some don't. But in any case, um, this bill should go to taxes, and, and if they choose to keep it there, I guess that, that would be the case. But um, I'd urge us to move this on to taxes. Further discussion? Representative Reem. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so we are still discussing the amendment, correct? Um, yes, that's correct. Be because I guess I wanted to make the comment of how um, the people who would benefit from this would be the people who are listed on the amendment, but not um, farmers who live in other counties. And I guess I have a concern with that. You know, there are counties in southwestern Minnesota, um, central Minnesota, that would also benefit from the, you know, the, the money being given out. Um, so I guess I have some concerns about it being so specific to just one area. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Further discussion to the amendment. Uh, and with that, uh, so all those in favor of the A1 amendment say aye. 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 Those, those opposed say no. The ayes have it, the A1 is adopted. So we'll move to testimony. Um, I don't see, there, are there any testifiers that would like to testify on behalf of this bill? If not, we will move, oh, re, we'll move to discussion. Representative Hansen. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I have some questions for the author. Um, so, Representative Jacob, the $5 per certified acre, uh, would that also be for acres that are currently under the Green Acres program? Representative Jacob. It, it would, yeah, I can't see why. It, if, the, if the acres are being tilled, correct. If, they're, if it's not an agricultural land, then not. Representative Hansen. Madam Chair, so even if someone is getting a benefit, a tax benefit with no requirements, which is what the Green Acres program is, you'd still give them $5 an acre, is that correct? Representative Jacob. The goal of the bill is to address nitrate issues, so uh, above and beyond what they're doing to become, have an incentive to become ag water quality certified and uh, protect the environment to protect the groundwater. Representative Hansen. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, so my understanding on 2A classification for farmers that they are taxed on one house and one acre. So would the $5 be for one house and one acre or would it be all land certified? Representative Jacob. It would be the land that they were, were farming. Mm -hmm. Representative Hansen. And Madam Chair, so um, I think we made some changes to the homestead requirements. So if I lived on 160 acres, but then I owned two or 3,000 acres that were not uh, attached to the land and the house where I owned and where I'm getting the benefit, that still is homesteaded. So there's a re low, reduced tax rate for all the land. If you're homesteading all the land on the farm, you'd still give the $5 per acre on top of that tax break. Is that correct? The, Representative Jacob. The Ag Water Quality Certification, I did not link it to any other tax programs. It would be land that was not certified, that became certified, or was certified. Representative Hansen. And Madam Chair and Representative Jacob, the Ag Water Quality Certification Program is completely funded by the government, by the taxpayers, so we'd actually be paying people to enter a program, which then we'd pay them for participating in the program, and you yourself indicated that many of the practices that you had, you were already doing, and so we'd be paying people who are already in the program, who are already getting multiple tax breaks for a program that's paid for by the government. I understand now why the farm groups love this program. Further discussion? 
further questions? Representative Anderson. Oh, Representative Nelson first. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, you know, the, uh, Representative Jacobs, thank you for your kind of overview, but I'm wondering if we could hear maybe from uh, the commissioner or maybe Mr. Redland on, kind of tell us about the program a little bit. I know probably enough to be dangerous about it, but um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, as Representative Jacob, you said, you know, there's a lot of things that you were already doing that you were able, but at the same time, there's things that you continue have to, you have to work on and improve. And I think, uh, you know, if we could hear, maybe what's the, it's not a, uh, once you've arrived, you're there. I believe it's a program that you continue to make improvements. And I think if we could hear from the, one of the commissioners or uh, Mr. Redland about that, I think that would be good. Mr. Redland? I see you approaching the table. If you can identify yourself before the committee and proceed. Yes, Madam Chair, Brad Jordahl Redland, Program Manager for the Minnesota Ag Water Quality Certification Program and the Soil Health Financial Assistance Program at the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. I'm always excited to talk about the Water Quality Certification Program. I think, um, uh, if you allow me, I'd, I'd approach it this way. Certification program is a whole farm comprehensive risk assessment and mitigation program. So uh, unlike anything that exists, <laughs> inarguably anything that exists anywhere in the country or the state, this program does a comprehensive risk assessment looking at every aspect of every acre management, uh, all pesticide use, all tillage use, all management, all nutrients, um, the physical field structures themselves, the slope, the soil type. All of those are assessed for the risk that they pose to water quality, be it groundwater, surface runoff, or other forms of, of impairment. And uh, where those risks are identified, the program then provides funding to assist that grower, uh, provides some funding, the grower provides the rest to implement the uh, practices that uh, NRCS, every SWCD, there is all the standard scientifically <laughs> supported practices that agriculture implements to address uh, known risks to water quality are what we deliver the exact same way every soil and water conservation district, every NRCS does it, it's the same people <laughs> implementing the practices uh, and removing those risks uh, on a whole farm comprehensive basis, which does set it in particular apart from all those other efforts where uh, soil and water conservation districts, Bowser, all the funding, public funding they receive is um, invaluable to our natural resources, but that's delivered through, through one practice at a time, where a grower says, I would like to adopt cover crops, and they adopt cover crops, and they get their assistance from the SWC, Bowser, and RCS. Uh, we do that too, but then we say, um, what about every other acre and every other cropping scenario on your entire operation rented or owned? We're gonna have to risk assess all of those, make sure that they uh, all the risks that are identified are mitigated, and if any one cropping scenario on any one field doesn't have those risks mitigated, then it can't be water quality certified. Representative so. Nelson? Uh, yeah, thank you for that. And so uh, probably a follow-up question on this. Um, it was, I think it's a 10-year certification, and so then upon you know, if someone's going to recertify, it would be looking at their practices they're currently doing and probably, you know, maybe they're, maybe they're completely compliant. Maybe they have some additional uh, parameters that need to be followed along. Is that, uh, you know, what's, what's the recertification process look like? Mr. Redland? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair, Representative Z. Uh, recertification process will be uh, required to be undertaken by everyone who reached their, their tenth year and uh, their first term is expired. Uh, it will be certified um, at the, uh, with the uh, risk assessment process that is in place then. Um, we've been very open from the outset that as science improves, as the data improves, as um, standards, national standards and state standards uh, change, we will be at the very leading edge of those. We will. Uh, adjust our certification to comport with all those changes. And uh, and we have. Um, Representative Jacobs' next certification is gonna be different than his first. <laughs> his certification is probably a little different than Representative Anderson's certification because their, their timing was different. So I think that, uh, um, yes, you'll go, th we'll certainly encourage every single farm that's ever been certified for 10 years to go up to 20 to go to 30. Um, but it will be a matter of uh, using the most recent uh, criteria that we have assembled. Thank you. Representative Anderson. Thank you again, Madam Chair. Representative Hansen brings up some good questions, uh, tax questions. 
tax questions. They belong in the tax committee where this bill should be going. But just a quick comment, he used as an example a 2,000 acre farm uh, getting a tax break. Sometimes I'm dangerous when I try to use my calculator on the fly, but I figured $5,000 an acre, that puts a value of $10 million. Um, that's far and away above the uh, Ag Homestead credit, which is currently gonna be up to three and a half million. So um, they wouldn't be all getting those acres getting that Ag credit. And you mentioned the house garage in one acre. I think that only applies to school operating levies. Um, so that would not be impacted by, by this type of credit. And you know, we're sitting here talking about where are we gonna get the million dollars to fund a program like this? And we look outside the, the windows here and there's a big hole in the ground. We're gonna spend almost three fourths of a billion dollars on a building that we might not need. And um, the bill that Chair Vang uh, worked on today, we're gonna be paying people money to buy land to grow marijuana. And um, I shake my head at that one. So when we come to a good program like this, which actually is gonna do something to help clean up the nitrogen situation and such, um, I think we should put things in priority and um, do the right thing. Further discussion to the bill? Representative Hansen. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I'm, I'm glad Mr. Redlin is here. You know, the kind of the curse of memory is uh, I remember the whole discussion on this. I actually took the photo of Representative Wagenius signing the contract back, and it was right before 2013. There was a, a change of control, and it was very controversial uh, to sign the contract. Um, the farm groups opposed it. They, uh, they were, uh, there was opposition to the Ag Water Quality Certification. I remember Representative Torkelson opposing uh, the program, I think, and maybe Ms. Representative Anderson, I can't quite remember uh, where you were at on some of this, but I there was sure. thought that it was over overlapping with the SWCDs doing existing uh, issues, but it was sold a couple ways. One was that it would avoid regulation. That was a primary marketing thing, is that this was a non-regulatory, and that it would uh, lead the market, not taxes, not wasn't designed as a tax program, it lead the market because then buyers could buy and market their programs as ag water quality certified, that it would provide them. And so it wasn't sold as a, this is gonna clean up the water. It wasn't sold as we need, as a tax program, it wasn't designed for any of that. Um, and it's just interesting after 11 years how, how things change. This is exactly what our concerns were when it was created, that, it, that we would be having this discussion at some time where, oh, we need another tax break. Um, so, uh, Mr. Redland, the, I've seen the presentations where it talks about tons and acres and, and reductions. So, um, does the program actually have evidence, monitoring evidence, of reducing groundwater, not modeling, but actual evidence from monitoring before and after uh, implementation of the practices that it's cleaning up groundwater or surface water. Mr. Redland? Yeah, Madam Chair, Representative. Uh, on farms that are certified with the monitors, we absolutely have that information. We can report that. We do not provide a monitor on inner edge field for all 1,040,000 acres that we have. We are. Our price tag obviously would be unbelievable for that kind of performance. But yes, we do have those things. We, uh, we further, um, uh, again, similar, because we were implementing the same practices, it's the same standard that everyone else does, that all of, because it's the same people doing the same work, the SWCDs, the NRCS, only we do it fully comprehensively and they do one practice at a time. Um, so that uh, the, uh, I guess, the one thing I wanted to get to is that, um, every practice that's implemented is for water quality. So um, I'm certainly not confronting the point, but I would mm -hmm. just ask the question that uh, from day one, uh, coming on board to create this program, water quality was the entire purpose of the program. Your statement that it somehow wasn't the purpose of the program. It's, uh, maybe I'm confused in your comment, but that's exactly what it was always ever meant to do was to uh, address water quality, water quality of 
performance of the farms, and that's why you risk assess the entire operation, which really kind of fits hand in glove with the regulatory certainty component, because if we're going to provide that regulatory certainty that says over these 10 years, you're not deemed, uh, you're not exempted from everything, but during this 10-year period, you're deemed in compliance with a new regulation should it come along, because you've already had every acre like literally assessed, walked under every cropping scenario. So we said we don't know what the rule is going to be or the new law is going to be yet, but we've uh, we've walked every acre, mitigated every risk we could find. <coughs> We're going to provide this incentive of deeming you in compliance with the new regulation. And those that have come along, like the buffer law or groundwater protection rule, uh, certification performance standards are actually higher than any of those rules anyway. So if to get water quality certified, you actually have to do more than you would do for those particular required regulations. Representative Hansen. Thank you, Madam Chair. And maybe to clarify, I was talking about the marketing of the program was about avoiding regulation and providing marketing in terms of certification that would drive the market that large buyers or other any buyers could say crops grown, food grown, products grown here are water quality certified, like a gold star program. Mm -hmm. And they could use that if the Cheerios are sold uh, or the cornflakes are sold as water quality certification. And, I, and that would help drive adoption, but that adoption is slower because at some point you move into the wall of altruism versus the altruists, then the people you have to pay, and then the people who don't want to do it, but maybe you can persuade, and then the folks that just will not do it. And then if there's plenty of them in a very susceptible area, even if you're the only adopter, it may not have an impact if there's conversion of land uh, that takes more land under the plow and undoes the work. Further discussion? Yeah. Representative Reen. So maybe I'm missing it, but is there a fiscal note on this? Representative Jacob? Uh, yeah, so there's, uh, well, we, we estimated 191,000 acres have already been certified in the eight county region times simple math, $5 an acre comes to less than a million dollars then plus whatever uh, the amendment from Representative Purcell would add, which would be quite small when you're talking about a couple of townships. And the acres that would come in this eight county area really are at the core of where this program started. So probably the highest percentage of acres are in this area. So. So less, less than a million. Representative Jacobs, perhaps we can uh, refer to our fiscal staff, uh, Ken Savory, to see uh, what the fiscal impact is. Uh, Chair and member, just to clarify, although um, a fiscal note would give some information because this bill deals with the, an appropriation for remittance on taxes, it would need a revenue estimate. Mm. And at this point in the process, that hasn't been requested because of the, the point in the process which the bill is at. Okay. Representative Reed. Thank you. So I was just um, checking to see where the nitrate in Minnesota's water, you know, is. And um, on the Minnesota Department of Health website, it shows that there's elevated water in uh, multiple areas of the state, um, but they tend to be in southwestern, southeastern, central, and north central areas of the state. So I guess for me, it, it seems like a very, um, it, it's an interesting idea, um, but it seems like you're only focusing on one area, and I think, you know, I, I'd like to look at the entire state and nitrate in the entire state. So, um, and not knowing how much that would cost, that, that I find very concerning. And also, um, I have a question about whether the farms are audited or inspected after they've received the certification. Is there any data on that if they go back to, um, using fertilizer the same way they did before? Or, you know, do we have any information on if it has improved? Mr. Redlin or Representative Jacob? No. Thank you, uh, thank you Madam Chair, Representative. Uh, yes, all, all farms have to be audited. Um, we uh, um, go through each farm, um, at, at least initially at the four year period to uh, compare. Because what they do is they make these commitments to their management, all the fertilizer management, all the tillage management, and each individual crop or pasture has its own uh, 
series of commitments made that include the fertilization, the, the tillage, the pesticide use, everything that has to be, you know, uh, risk assessed and mitigated through those practices. So that is all done. Um, proud to say that as we survey our growers, we've surveyed them twice now at the 500 and 1,000 mark of participation that um, uh, we found that 75% of those farms um, continue, obviously, the practice that they have, but they've added 75% of them, or up nearly 75, 74 and change, have uh, adopted new practices as well. Um, the uh, uh, effort that we have is an ongoing relationship. This is a 10-year relationship that these growers are getting in with the local certifiers and their local SWCDs to, um, you know, be there, a free consultant, free for them. <laughs> um, the appropriation we receive pays for it. Uh, but they have that consultant was available to them to help them through all the challenges and certainly what happens is changing hands of land. Um, it's, we require all rented land as well as own land to be certified and maintain those commitments. And we know that's most leases aren't going to be 10 years and they're going to change. So we have to, uh, in those instances, anytime there's a change in land management, we have to uh, recertify or revisit those, those new acres with, uh, with each grower. Representative Reem? No further questions, thank you. Representative Purcell. Thank you, just, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just a very brief question. Um, since we have you here, Mr. Jordal Redlin, um, what is the current length of time when someone enrolls to when certification happens? Mr. Redlin? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair uh, and Vice Chair. The, uh, it depends. <laughs> uh, we don't regard it as a race. Uh, we want to encourage everyone to get certified as at uh, um, as fast as we can, but uh, each certification is uh, it's site specific to the actual conditions on subconditions on each parcel, um, and it's also completely then dependent on the uh, ability, the opportunity, uh, whatever the circumstance might be for each individual farm to pursue that certification. Um, what we uh, see is a lot of major commitments have to be made to this program. There's you know, upwards of 3,000 new practices that have to have been adopted to uh, earn the certifications that we've delivered so far. And some of those choices take time. We've seen two years before a farm can transition to a, a new management system or uh, get equipment that is necessary to have these new management systems. So yes, we look out as long as two years to get water quality certified. Um, if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. We're, we're here to protect the water and protect it long term, so we accept that. Um, but it can happen in two weeks, we see. Um, and it's not dependent upon size either. You can see a, a 10 acre, you know, direct marketing program who gets to hang their sign on their booth and say, you know, water quality certification is a marketing device. And uh, it might take them here, it might take them two, two weeks. It might take a 5,000 acre, more generic commodity uh, producer who was you know, crop identity isn't recognized in the sense it goes into a generic, generic commodity flow. Uh, less able to market that product as water quality certified, but certainly can do it in two weeks or two years as well. Representative Purcell. Thank you, Madam Chair. Further discussion? All right. Well, members, uh, hearing Representative Jacob's bill was part of our effort to find long-term solutions uh, to resolving on nitrates here uh, at the state. Um, and so uh, thank you, Representative Jacob, for your contribution. Um, and But seeing how uh, this bill, House Bill 4044, needs a little bit more work, uh, I will lay this bill over. <laughs>